you know, one of the biggest arguments I run into online is like people being like, oh, you're just, you, you grew up being a Christian. So you've been brainwashed, you've been indoctrinated. And that's not the case with me, right? And I know it's not the case with many Christians, but they, they want to believe that. But in reality, it's the world that's being indoctrinated and conditioned to reject the word of God, right? Just take this magazine, for example. Look at this, 2009 Bedside Astrologer booklet, right? Have an orgasm every time. What it's like to love a girl. Think about, think about all these things. She's not, Amanda Bynes, she's not that innocent, right? Think about, um, think about how they're, they're getting you to want to have sex before marriage. They're getting you to dress with barely any clothing. Worry about your makeup, worry about your hair, worry about your earrings, worry about everything that's vanity. Because the other women are going to be worrying about the vanity too. So they get you all to worry about the same things through magazines like Cosmopolitan. Right? It's been happening for years. Think about how women dressed in the 20s, right? And now fast forward to 2020 and think about the, the transformation that our countries went through, um, you know. Six frisky phrases that will have him burning up by bedtime. You know, erotic astrology, searching for your sexual soulmate. You know, not not searching for a good husband, not searching for a good father, but your sexual soulmate. Right. Think about that. You know, every one of these has astrology on it. Even going back to 1977, bedside astrologer. I had an affair with my best friend's husband. Right. So they plant that seed like. Oh, I did it, you know, like, here's my story. You know, it's just, it's really disgusting. Once you, once you think, look at it with a new set of eyes, like, when, when, if you're in the deception, it's hard to see the deception. But once the Lord reveals himself and he's, he, he teaches you the word, you're like, wow, now you see what the devil's doing with magazines like this, right? <clears throat> Here's another one. Astrology special section, fall 97. Your sexual, emotional, and romance predictions. Men confide exactly how long they're willing to wait. You know, putting out, right? How long should you wait before you put out? They don't even talk about marriage, right? Now it's just like, you know, how many weeks should I wait till I put out? How to fire up his desire in bed. Make him beg for it. How much can you tell your lover about your past? <clears throat> Cosmos, annual bedside astrologer. Star spells, right? How astrology can help you seduce your ideal man. The bedside astrologer companion. Follow the stars to sensual satisfaction. You know, all about astrology, right? You know, this is goes back to Isaiah. Look at this. Moreover, <clears throat> actually, the astrology is in, in Isaiah chapter 47. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. He's saying that's a very harsh warning from the Lord saying, do not get into astrology, right? And so that's why they put astrology on every magazine cover to get you to do the astrology, right? This is not by accident. It's by design. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. You know, this is, this goes back, you know, science likes to say we're moving past the Bible. Well, if we're moving past the Bible, why are we still doing the things and talking about the things that the Lord warned us about, right? Why, why is it still relevant today? And Alfonso brought an astro astrologer onto the set. So I was taking uh, Bach uh, flower essences every day, the concoction for my well-being. We had to begin filming on a special day. The release date of the picture has to be on a special day. Uh, so I, you're looking askance. But um, yeah, it's part of it, man. Astrology, the earth, the stars, it's all part of the gig. The gift, which centers around the abilities of a psychic, had an effect on Keanu that lingered longer than the film did in theaters. Seeing psychics who have told me things that they couldn't possibly know, you know, having my cards read and, 
and telling me things they couldn't possibly know, you know. So for me, it's uh, it's uh, I've had real experiences with it. Take a take a look at her and now listen to this verse. Listen to what this says. Moreover, the Lord saith, this is Isaiah 3.16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet like high heels. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, their calls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty, thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in, in the war. Right? It's, it's nothing new under the sun. And if you have a nose ring or jewels, and you know, it's so everybody does. We've all been deceived, right? This is not to judge people. I just want you to see that this is a conditioning experiment, experiment by by the devil. He's he's conditioning us through the puppets, right? They don't even know they're being used probably. They're just it says they they're seduced, they're deceived themselves, right? They're deceived and then they pass on the deception to others. It's not like every single person is a devil. It's just once you once you teach a, you know a group of people something, then they teach the rest, right? It's just you know, it's just like Rihanna's shirt here, upside down cross, control minds with an upside down cross. Right? It's upside down because the Bible says that they turn things upside down. You know, Isaiah 29, 15, woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be as esteemed as the potter's clay. Right? That's why they, they turn things upside down. That's why the upside down cross is the symbol of rebellion. You know, and she covering one eye. It's kind of, it's like Jim Carrey, you know, said on, what was the Jimmy Kimmel show? You know, talking about the all mocking tongue. Right? That's in the Bible as well. You don't know what that is. I have no idea. Well, you don't know. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know. David Letterman doesn't know. Well, we don't know. All the comics and show business don't know what this is. <laughs> right? Yeah. What is it? Come on, Jimmy. Seriously. The time is up. People are hip to this kind of stuff. I, I'm here tonight to blow the lid off it, to be the whistleblower. I'm sick and tired of the secrets and the lies. It is the secret symbol of the Luminati and you're a part of it, and it is the all-mocking tongue. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it is a straight It's the symbol of the all-mocking tongue, and I'm sick of it. I want everybody to be in on the joke, man. You know what I mean? For years now, talk show hosts, people on television, people in sitcoms have been hired by the government to... <laughs> throw you off the track, to distract you, to make you laugh and stuff like that, make you happy and docile so you don't know what's really going on, you know? And they get out there in the woods in a circle naked and they decide these things and, you know, and you know, look at them, look at them trying to, look at them trying to come it up. It's hilarious, hilarious. And, you know, and I'm sick of, oh, hold on a second. You know what they're trying to do? Who? This thing is buzzing, hold on. They're trying to turn us into, you know, uh, you know, consumer drones of some sort. Hold on, I just got to get this. And you know, he, it's the all mocking tongue because, you know, that's what the Bible says they'll do. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? And it also has to do with child sacrifice, if you, if you keep going. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Right. So I find it interesting that it's connected to child sacrifice. 
Now, Jim Carrey doesn't know this Bible. He's not doing that to troll Christians. He's doing that because he knows most people don't even know what the all mocking tongue is, is about. They're not going to connect it to the Bible, right? And he lost his mind right after he did that. Right after that interview, he lost his mind. So you think that's a coincidence? You tell me. No. So anyway, just, uh, you know, share this with somebody who doesn't know the Lord. Share it. You know, if they want to laugh, you know, share it with someone you think will laugh at it. I don't care. You can mock me all you want. But I know the Lord. And uh, I know that he's real. And I know that the Bible exposes this world for what it is. And I just, uh, if you haven't, if you haven't confessed to Jesus Christ and asked for forgiveness, uh, now's the time to do it. 2020 is not the the year to mess around, right? Even non-believers are like, what's going on in 2020? So I pray that you, uh, you ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness, ask him into your heart, uh, be born again and uh, watch him change your life. Uh, you'll never be the same, that's for sure. So you might get laughed at, but it'll be worth that, worth it in the end. So God bless you. I'll talk to you on the next one.